Howdy again, it's Tubal Cain, and I'm on one of my field trips, and I'm in a small village here at a machine shop, and this is the one that I've been talking about for quite a while. I'm in my truck right now, and uh, I have just made uh, some uh, purchases, which will be on another video, uh, Tubal Cain Go Shopping 3, I think is what it'll be called, but uh, I, I went in here, and I, uh, I got permission from the men, the owners, who are retiring to, uh, to do a little video filming, and uh, I am going to show you how one of their Brown and Sharp machines works, a screw machine. So I think you'll enjoy this as well as just a, a brief uh, uh, tour of this building where they are, have been in business for 50 years making small parts on Brown and Sharp screw machines. And uh, this era has come to an end and uh, they're selling out. And we're lucky to see one of these machines run before the electricity is disconnected. So let's go inside. I'm in the screw machine shop now in a small town that I have been talking about here that is going out of business and they still have several machines that they have not sold, including the ones that I have on uh, the uh, camera right now. And Tom is going to be kind enough to show us uh, one in operation that he still has that he's running some spacers. Now it's not this one but another one that he's got uh, warming up and he's got the oil running and it's, it's the fire one right here and I'm going to zoom in on that in just a second. And here it is running. Hold it right in front of the camera here Tom. That's, that's what he's making. It's a little, a little spacer. Just a little thing, and there's a there's a drawing for it right up there. Feeds out, turns down the OD. I don't have the right cam, so that's a, this is for a two as a double drill cam. So I just bypass one drill center, drill now I'll cut it off. All right. And there's the part. All right. There's the part is done. Now tell me what it's doing. As right now it's turning it's down. It's turning on the OD. With the box tool. Yeah, now the front tool will come up and chamfer both ends of the OD. Now it's the center, that's the drill. And then the back tool will come up and cut off the piece. This job should run about five or six seconds and it should run stop center drill with a form tool, but I didn't have the right cam. So this is just an open space right here. Now it's center, now it's drilling the part, and it'll cut it off. Thanks for describing this, Tom, because that will be oh, on the film, and this is very intriguing to some people. And the parts are dropping out here in this pan, so get ready for one to come off. Yep. There we go. There, there the it drops in the pan. Drop in the pan, and there's your part. <laughs> nice little spacer. And so a special is, OD and the uh, ID is a special 217. I have to use a millimeter drill. Uh, I forgot what size it was. But, uh, and this is a brown and sharp number what? It's a double lot. It's, it's, it's a double lot. Uh, I believe it's a 1946. 19, from 1946 and it's being fed with a bar feeder. Right. Uh, that you see up there. And uh, what's the diameter of the stock? The diameter of the stock is uh, 5 sixteenths, 312. It's, it's 5 sixteenths, and this is a 12L14 yeah, steel. 12L14 steel. Now I'm going to move the camera for yet one other close up. This is a rare opportunity to uh, see this, and Tom was kind enough to say that we could uh, we could watch it run. And it's being driven here by a flat belt, and the motor and the drive is up above. Now that's not an air feeder on there. No. No, it's okay. well, it's, it, uh, the RPM is running approximately uh, 1,700 RPM. 1,700 RPM, and uh, it should run fast. Well. Now, uh, how is that stock being drawn in by a, a feed finger? Uh, on, on a feed finger too. Right. Uh, a feed finger is attached to two. Oh, right here. Here's what they call your feed finger too. There's the feed finger. And here's your feed finger. You got all different sizes. You got 5 sixteenths, 3 yeah. eighths, half inch. And this will feed the part out. This will grab the stock, and when it when it opens up the collar, it'll feed it out. But you need the feed tube. This is your feed tube with yeah. your feed finger. And you got all kinds of sizes on the feed fingers. 
all the way up to half inch. This machine goes up to half inch diameter. That is awesome. Up to half inch, did you hear them? And you go down to about 30 seconds. You can actually machine a 30 seconds. Down to a 30 second diameter, which is really small. You got a 30 second pin one time. And what kind of oil are we using? Uh, it's a mineral-based oil, uh, cutting oil, mineral-based okay. cutting oil. Is there sulfur in it or yeah, not? sulfur and chlorine. Sulfur so and on, chlorine. Uh, it should be about 10%, 12%, 10% chlorine would be a, 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 a substantial cutting oil. And this is really a very simple part that's yes, being run. Yes, very simple part. And uh, they, they run things that are much, much more complex, but this is just a, a last-minute thing they're doing here as they uh, right. uh, close down the shop here. And this is where uh, so many things are for sale. Matter of fact, is this machine for sale? They're gonna hang. On. They're gonna hang on to this little beauty. <laughs> I don't really want so. uh, Okay, this one isn't for. Not that I was gonna buy it. I was just curious here. This this is fascinating. That's the turret, and we got some more parts moving over here. A lot of moving parts. Uh, Tom, is this computer controlled? No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that, not that was a joke. Can you see the cam right here? No computers here, no solid state uh, chips. But billions and billions of parts were run this way in the United States uh, during the Industrial yeah, Revolution. Right. Yeah, billions and billions. And these Brown and Sharps were probably that and Warner Swayze were the two better, yeah. were the two major brands probably. And Brown and Sharp also made the tooling. And on, on the walls behind here, you can see the cams. And there's thousands of those for different jobs. And often they have to be custom made. Yeah. Brown and Sharp made machines so well that they very really wore out. Yeah, these machines were used for years and years. Yeah, these machines lasted forever, and there are the parts. That's the simplest piece. Uh, uh, I can't get that in focus, but those are the, the, the finished parts, the little bushings. Very fascinating to see. And on the walls over here are collets by the hundreds and all kinds of other tooling. Thank you, Tom. If you want to shut this off now okay. before you use up the whole well, you're bar. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Sure appreciate anyway, it. It's a little cleaner. Back. And if you wanted to complete the job, uh, you would have had a recess in there. And there's some of their other collets that are used because there's more than one size machine here. They used to have dozens of machines, and now they're down to... Uh, perhaps four or so. Most of them have been sold. And more cams over here and uh, a lot more tooling down there as well as everything you see on the tables which of course is now uh, for sale. Uh, die heads, knurlers and uh, you name it. And the place is, the shop is a busy place today because uh, there are some uh, men here with, uh, with dollars that are buying some of this. This is just a small portion of some of the tooling on the wall. Some of the tools hold drills and reamers. Some are uh, uh, turn boxes, which I've talked about in some of my other videos. Box tools. Everything's for sale, as well as all the precision tools, gauges. Almost an endless assortment. Continuing on this side, various gauging uh, precision tools. And I, Tubal Cane, am buying a bunch more today. And they've already sold a lot. Here's a slightly larger brown and sharp. I don't know what number that is, but also has the uh, motor overhead, flat belt drive. 
And these two men are standing around uh, a machine, the second machine there is what we just saw running. And then this one right behind you is uh, number two. This one goes up A lot of cams on the wall there. But basically they ran all the same cams. And these are the bar feeders. Every machine had a bar feeder. 12 foot bars were put in there and the machines uh, made the part, machined it, and then cut it off the length, whatever the length was. Fascinating. Yes, there were 22 machines along the line here, one under each one of these lights that you see here. Now there's only four left, and he also had about 25 of them in the back room that were bought at auction at scrap price, mainly to be uh, used for parts, even though they seldom needed the parts because these machines, uh, Brown and Sharp, were so incredibly rugged and uh, reliable. And over here, there's a rack of much smaller collets for the smaller machines. They have an awful lot of tooling here. Now where the machines once were, there are oil barrels with uh, plywood on top and everything for sale. It saddens me greatly that all of this is being done in China or not being done at all, but certainly not in the United States. This is a rare look into uh, an older shop where the men are retiring and uh, the uh, younger men aren't interested or are being told that there is no living to be, be being made uh, in this kind of trade anymore. And here, like a lonely sentinel, is the clipper belt lacing machine for the flat belts. And you recently saw one of those in one of my Go Shopping videos that I bought here, but they are retaining the one for their own purposes. Yeah. This is the end of the shop where they did some milling and slotting and uh, other uh, secondary operations. There are boxes of collets here and racks of collets and, and uh, uh, more parts there, air parts on the, uh, and these are little milling machines. And uh, there's a whole bank of drill presses over here. They used to have quite a few employees here that uh, did all of these different operations. And on the tables here are all of the air fixtures, uh, collet attachments and vices that are air operated that would hold the work and they could uh, really run the parts fast. And here we have a big old do-all bandsaw like I used to have at the high school. I wish I had one like that in the basement, but it's way too big to move. I think that's about a 20-inch bandsaw. That's a nice one. More tooling up there. Everything for sale.